let's move to the next section of uh, of of our of our topic here. Uh, so, what happens when we see un uh, unjustified police murder? We um we see protesters, right? As is our constitutional right. Our constitutional right is to protest. And uh, we saw a lot of uh, we saw this being a part of uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement because a lot of stuff was revealed about Elijah McClain's death uh, last year. And he became one of the one of the names that people would chant. Right. We had George Floyd. Uh, we had Breonna Taylor. We had uh, Antoine Rose III just out of my hometown in Pittsburgh. And we had Elijah McClain. We had tons of names that kind of keep going down the list. Uh, Tamir Rice, that we, we saw those cops didn't get anything. And the same thing with this. The cops that murdered Elijah McClain, nothing. Nothing. The cops that murdered Breonna Taylor, one of them got a sentence because he accidentally shot a fucking door. And really, he should have been more careful about that door, you guys. You know, what was that, Mah mahogany? It could have been mahogany. We don't know now. We'll never know. We'll never know what that door could have achieved. But that's the narrative that's really seen in this in this sort of context, right? Is, oh boy, property damage. These motherfuckers. But that's that's how they look at protesters too. They look at protesters as people that are destroying critical infrastructure, right? Uh, so in Aurora... Uh, they held a vigil. They held a, 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 a march and a vigil that landed up in this park, and they were uh, they were memorializing Elijah McClain. And one of the things that Elijah did, as I mentioned earlier, is that he played violin uh, for shelter cats. He played the violin for them, right? Uh, music and and he, I, I even I even see Milo whenever I I like talk to him and hang out with him. He's very responsive and like he kind of fucking talks back to me a little bit, like he. <laughs> he'll say stuff to me so i'm sure like the cats really fucking loved listening to him play the violin right like some of them were like oh man this is great um uh, and uh so so they were these activists were, were were memorializing him by playing the violin in the park and what did we see happen this was like a viral video that happened last year uh we saw cops all black riot gear fucking coming in with tear gas and rubber bullets and breaking that up. Why? Well, they were in a public park without a permit. The fuck are you talking about? Well, they were gathering with that. They were doing something bad. They were playing the violin. Yeah, no, they can't do that without a permit, though. Oh, so you can't just go in and be like, hey, guys, you really need a permit to do something like this. Instead, you go fucking tear gas up. They don't have a slip of paper. These are just hall monitors that fucking take their jobs too seriously. Hall pass. Where's your hall pass? I need to see it. I have a sash that gives me authority. The sash. That's who these kids. That's who these people are. They're, they're just hall monitors that somebody gave steroids to later in their life. And they're like, we can be cops. We can fucking throw chemical weapons at people that we don't like. And if they say anything, we use rubber bullets. And the government is on our side. Respect the sash. I mean the badge. That's essentially what they are now. They're just righted out fucking hall monitors. Nobody respected the hall monitor because they took their jobs too fucking seriously. And so are these guys, right? You need a permit. You guys murdered an innocent black kid. Your permit can eat my dick is what it can do. How's that sound? It gets worse because now what's happening is... There are peaceful protesters. There was another peaceful protest that happened outside of a uh, uh, a police department, the Aurora Police Department, right? Uh, and and they were uh, all, you know, very peacefully chanting outside. They had their signs. They had a bunch of people there. 
Uh, they, they got together to take a photo in front of the, you know, the, the police station there. But then they stayed, stood off to the side at the entrance of the police station so that all the cops, when they leave, would have to walk past all of the peaceful protesters talking about Elijah McClain. Now, this is nothing new. Uh, during the labor movement, when there were large strikes like this, the strikers and protesters would stand outside of the place that they were striking from, right? These big mills, factories, so on and so forth. And they would chant and they would have their signs and they would list off their demands and they would have speakers, but they would force the scabs, the managers, uh, and all of that sort of stuff walk past them. So they knew that they could be heard. So they knew that they were disrupting. This is what you're supposed to do. This is how dissent works. This is how civil disobedience works. Civil disobedience doesn't work when you're like, this is how you're supposed to disobey. When you're within the rules of disobedience. No, that's not what disobedience is. They weren't doing anything violent. They weren't throwing shit at the cops. They weren't throwing shit at the buildings. So now they're facing, uh, let me let me look exactly how long they were facing in prison. I think it's like 48 years. It's like 48 years in prison um, for kidnapping charges. That's what they're that's what they're saying. Uh, Ringo demonstrations sounded a police station in Aurora, which meant that the officers wouldn't uh, inside would have to walk through peaceful protesters line to get out of the building. For this action, prosecutors argue that they effectively kidnapped 18 police officers and are hoping that they will face many decades in prison. So they're not even saying that the building was in trouble. They're saying that the police officers inside the building that were working at the time were kidnapped by the protesters. Here's the thing with the term kidnapping. Uh, first of all, you're supposed to take somebody from the place they were at and take them to a different location and then hold them against their own will. These people were inside of the police department. Peaceful protesters show up and 18 of them were like, well, well we feel uncomfortable. And we don't we don't want to leave because we feel ooky because they're making us deal with things that we don't want to deal with. We're men. We were told to bury all of this, if all of these feelings. And, and these people are making us feel the feelings. And that's ooky and awful. And it's so mean. We feel kidnapped. We're triggered. Pardon the pun. Again, this goes into the way that they're trained. They're trained to think that all of the citizens in the world are out to get them. That's part of police training. It's us versus them. They don't train you how to de-escalate a situation. They train you to think that the people that you're quote-unquote protecting and serving have it, have it out for you, and they're going to kill you. So they look at people like Lillian House, Joel Nor Northrum, and Eliza Lucero, and they and they look at them and they go, they're kidnapping us through peaceful protests. They stood there with their signs and it was mean and I'm scared and I don't like it. It makes me feel ooky on the inside. Well, motherfucker, maybe you shouldn't murder innocent black people. Maybe you shouldn't murder innocent brown people. Maybe you shouldn't murder innocent poor people. Maybe you should stop doing the state's fucking bidding and being a psychopath. You ever think about that? That's a fun thing that you could try. Have you tried for 24 hours not being a fucking psychopath? What a, what a fun thing to try. Most of us are able to do it every day, nonstop. Most of us are not psychopaths that would pick on a fucking five foot six, 140 pound skinny black kid who's an introvert and doesn't want you to touch him. These three organizers are facing uh, 48 years in prison. Let me let me uh, let me pull up some of the quotes uh, that people are saying about these folks and some of the some of the things that these folks themselves have said. 
Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let me pull that up. Here we are. Okay, so here's the article. So here's a here's a constitutional civil rights attorney, Mara Verhaden Hilliard. I hope I pronounced that name pro properly. I apologize if I don't. But here's what she's explaining. Yeah, she goes and explains the what what I explained a little bit ago about the labor movement, right? If you think about the labor movement and all the struggles that have been engaged uh, in over the last century and are commonly engaged in when people want to send a message, think about a picket line. A picket line is always outside of a building. People are marching back and forth. Sometimes they are chanting, this is a classic labor protest and crucial to labor struggles in the United States. That same type of protest can be trained, charged the same way this was with decades in prison. So she's pointing out like, well, we haven't done this to labor activists, which what the other part of it is, is the labor activists were fired upon by, by, you know, essentially hired mercenaries like the Pinkertons who are not police officers, who are essentially private uh, mercenaries that were hired by the corporations uh, to attack those people. But, you know, at this point, what's the difference between uh, a police officer and a private mercenary when they're killing over a thousand people a year. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, Lillian House, a uh, soft spoken millennial who makes a living buying cute vintage clothing from strip stores and selling it online. Uh, the, I don't, the, the, she sounds like the lead of uh the netflix show girl boss i don't know if you guys saw girl boss it's a fun show it's not groundbreaking or anything it's a fun it's a fun little program uh i enjoyed the first season of it a fun little watch there but that's who she sounds like she sounds like the lead of the of the netflix television show girl boss uh and they fucking put her in prison for kidnapping 18 police officers oh man yeah look if police officers are fucking trained uh to protect and serve us and 18 of them were kidnapped by a soft-spoken millennial who sells cute vintage clothing online. Uh, maybe these people aren't ready to be police officers. Maybe they should just go back to being mall cops. This is what she says. 12 felonies and 13 misdemeanors is what she's uh, being charged for. And she goes, there's absolutely no legitimacy to these charges. We did nothing wrong and nothing illegal. The reason that the police targeted us, the reason that they arrested us in such a terrifying and invasive ways, including surrounding me with numerous cop cars and sending a SWAT team to Joel's apartment and dragging him out in front of his neighbors, the reason that they held us in horrible conditions in jail for eight days, the reason that they stacked the case of ridiculous and extreme charges on us, and the reason they are forcing us to go through a grueling legal battle is that we led an extremely successful and popular campaign to hold them accountable. This is the next step to the ALEC laws. If you're unfamiliar with the ALEC laws, uh, Alec is a Coke-funded um, legislation. Like they, they write boilerplate legislations, and then uh, have you know governors and uh, state representatives and things of that sort pass them unequivocally. Uh, one of the things Alec uh, put forward were these boilerplate um, critical infrastructure laws that basically says that they can jail and fine protesters when they protest and quote unquote trespass over critical cr critical infrastructure buildings uh, like oil pipelines and telecommunication towers and so on and so forth. This is the next step to it. They're claiming kidnapping when this woman and Joel here, I'll show you a picture of all three of them right here. Joel's the only uh, black man uh, in, in this, in the trio here. And then you have two petite women that have been arrested by Roy Rage cops uh, and held them accountable. It just shows that they're. It, it just shows that it's working. What they're doing is working. Here's the here's the last quote that they that they have at the end of this article here. Um, Police in Aurora are not used to being held under a spotlight, and when they are, they have a lot to lose. And so when we led mass protests, we brought attention uh, together 
We brought together thousands of people in the streets. Uh, when we forced the city to start making reforms, they began to target us. They want people to see what we are going through, conditions of our arrests, our experiences in jail, and our legal battle, and they want people to be afraid to protest. The cops and the district attorneys want people to see what we are going through and to think this is what you risk when you stand up against them. And this is true. They are risking that. When these people uh, stand up against the cops, they are risking that. They are risking their lives. At this point, that's essentially what they're risking their lives, they're, they're, what they're doing. They're risking their lives and their livelihood. This wasn't a kidnapping charge. There's no way that you can claim that 18 police officers were kidnapped because they felt ooky about walking past peaceful protesters who were engaging in legal constitutional civil disobedience. Conservatives can't say shit about it. What are they going to say? They were exercising their legal constitutional right, and conservatives drone on and on about how the Constitution is this important fucking document. What can they legitimately say? This is going to be a spiral now. Because, look, I bet you, and, 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 by the way, if you have conservative friends, show them this stuff. Send them this video. Send them the link to this article. I'll pull it. I'll pull up the link again. I gotta find it first. You know, send send them that link. Send them the link to that article. Show them what's going on. This is what it means to fight back against the uh, the police department here. There's no way that they will fucking um, be able to justify this constitutionally. There is no constitutional justification for what they're doing. They're going after people who are exercising their First Amendment right to protest. So what do you got, conservatives? Fucking nothing. They illegally murdered a child. They illegally murdered this kid. I think the one good thing we can say about the social media age and uh, the age where everybody's filming themselves is that it's getting harder and harder for the victors to rewrite history. It's getting harder and harder for them to fucking do that. You, a conservative sees this. The next thing you show them is all those boilerplate ALEC laws. And show them in comparison to this. And it's going to be hard for them to, to legitimately defend pipelines arresting protesters. Then you show them what happened at Dapple. You show them the rest of what happened with the Black Lives Matter movement. And you show how protesters and activists fighting for the just cause, whether you agree with them or not, is not is, is not what we are trying to discuss here. You know, if it's with a conservative, that's not what we're trying to discuss. What we are showing you is that these people will fight the Constitution to legalize state-sponsored murder of black and brown people across this country, of poor white people across this country. Let's look at some of your comments. Uh, the cops that murdered Darnell Prude, no charges. I, I'm not familiar with this case. Uh, Holly, if you have a link to that, uh, feel free to post that in the comment section there, but I am not familiar with that case, uh, but I will look into that for sure. Uh, Dinner with Franklin, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, chemical weapons, Slear Glass, are against international law. Yeah, but they're freely used by uh, American police departments. No big deal, just going against the Geneva Convention. They were kidnapping a building. I mean, they weren't even really doing that, right? Like they were, they were just 
pro they were peacefully protesting and they got uh, accosted for it. Uh, Stevie says, since cops claim fear is why they kill, they need fear. Uh, they need to fear the consequences of killing and brutalize, brutalizing people. Right now, uh, they know they can literally get away with murder. Legally, too. Yeah, the qualified immunity uh, legally lets them get away with murder. No fucking problem. No fucking problem. They can legally get away with murder. Uh, yeah, they use the I feared for my life excuse. Uh, what was the fear on a five foot six, 140 pound guy that kept saying, I'm an introvert and you're, uh, you're violating my personal space. Please, please leave me alone. What was scary? Oh, I, I, it was so confusing. He said things like, leave me alone. And I'm an intro. Who's an introvert? What a fucking idiot. Like, that's how the cops treat this kid. Uh, Coward needs to find a new line of work because they ain't cut out for it. They're not. Uh, draining time, energy, and resources in court. That's what they're expecting. That's what they want. That's what they're pushing for. Um, but look, you, you know, we, we just talked about how Lee Camp just had Lillian on uh, his, his program. That's going to amplify it a lot. Uh, we're talking about it here. Mint Press News is covering it. And a lot more people are going to find out about what's actually going on. And they can't hide behind it. So even though they're draining time, energy, and resources in court, uh, we'll we'll help these people out with legal fees. If they have a fucking GoFundMe or something, we'll I, I'm I'm sure all of us will donate to it. Uh, and even if they win, even if even if they win, even if they win, it is such a it's going to be such a PR nightmare that the communities in Aurora will never fucking support them again. And the only people that will are uh, rich liberals and rich conservatives who don't give a shit about. Uh, progressive ideologies and don't give a shit about anybody making less than them anyway. Uh, most of them do. I know I'm kind of painting with a broad brush here, but you know, that's why we need to call attention to it so that it's not a drain on time or energy or wasted resources. Even if, even if the same thing happens that happened with Breonna Taylor, guess what they'll do? They'll send the fucking national guard to Aurora. Ain't it interesting how quickly the National Guard gets called when uh, they let killer cops go free? But a bunch of fucking white supremacists, racists, and extremists talk online about taking over the Capitol, and the National Guard is nowhere to be seen. Isn't that interesting how the state protects its own bodyguards? Isn't that interesting? Uh, dear Franklin, I wonder if the kidnapping is related to their ability to claim all sorts of money for PTSD treatment uh, from the most inevitable civil lawsuits. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, the way I looked at it is just sort of them twisting the law a little bit. Uh, but this doesn't fit the definition of kidnapping in any way, shape or form. Um, so I think they're just they're reaching, they're desperate, and, and they are trying to waste time, energy, and money. But I don't see this really going anywhere past, like, the reading, right? I think a judge is going to kind of look at this and be like, you're all insane. Uh, and and no, you're going to have to let these people out of prison. Uh, if it's a good judge, if it's a sociopathic judge, then, you know, we, we might see this go to trial. Uh, Kami John, thank you for the tip. Much appreciated. Love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> Kami John from Real Progressives. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for the tip, Kami John. Uh, that is, uh, that's very kind of you. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, 
whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.